We have a question there about the tool position, and I just want to cover that a bit more accurately. So for coming around here, it's a six millimeter tool with a swept back grind. You get to a point there where you're locked up, and then you come back that way. And I also have this swept back grind, six millimeter tool with a very, very short handle with the inverted grip. And if I was doing this bowl here, I can come around that there and come around and the whole tool fits inside the bowl. So you can invert that there and you're not obstructed by the handle as you would be by getting to there and stopping. You follow that? Yeah. So I got a unhandled, just a tool, head only, turned a short handle for it, and I can get right round inside the piece. So, very, very nice for getting a complete undercut bead. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to come on here and stitch it, talk to you a little bit about that. And it's, as I said in the beginning, this is not difficult. Anyone can turn a bowl, then you can quite clearly have a go at this. It's, it's just a question of what is the easiest and safest way to do it. So and the thread that you're screwing onto now, you can get those from you or... Oh, it's just a piece of inch and a quarter, eight, uh, sorry, yeah, inch and, inch, inch and a quarter. Same thread as the lathe, really. Yes, yes. Just welded to a post. There's another one there. So you can get on this one here, you can make them up. Yep. Yeah. And just what about the, um, the tool post for, like, you've got that flat platform thing. Is there any easy way to... Is it just like a, a steel engineer has a bit of steel rod to fit in the, in the tool rest? In here, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So you want a normal piece of... Normal piece of one-inch rod there, which will drop down into there and get them to weld it square to a piece of steel plate. Good question. And then these, these boring tables are just wonderful things. You can use them for all sorts of other tasks. Um, and they're just so handy. G cramps, you don't need to screw that down or nail it down. Just G cramp it on, take it off when you're finished. Jigs are just wonderful. They'll simplify uh, projects. <coughs> and they are reusable projects. Reusable jigs. So, Really all I wanted to show you now is how we stitch. Oop. It's pretty commonplace to, you can see that I'm sure. I would normally um, round uh, this off, sand it and, and then wax it. Uh, but I wanted to talk to you about the quality of the ends of the fibre. You want to be able to put super glue on there. You want to cut it with a razor knife on a board and then you want to be able to stitch it through. Uh, there's a little bit of fibre there that I'm just pulling at to see if I can get that tidy, which I think I'll have to just use my knife. A little bit of fibre sticking off there, and it would tend to catch in the hole. So I'm just going to sort of try and tidy that a little bit, because you want the entry to that without fraying, otherwise you're just going to get it into a mess. That'll probably give it to us. So when you're stitching, you want really three times the circle of the bowl. When you cut your stuff off the roll, get three times the circle of the bowl so you've got enough to stitch because otherwise there just won't be enough room. So three times the circle of the bowl and a couple of scraps. I'm just going to use these tail ends of this one just to speed the process up. So you can take the piece through the hole. Remember, this bead would be sanded and waxed. Take that into, into there like that. Pull it over there and go in and loop it. Okay, and that gives you a nice contrasting colour there. So now I'm coming back through the other way with the blue. But it goes in the same hole then. Same hole. Yeah. If you have a look at the bowl right next to it here, it's a cross stitch. Yeah. See that there? Once you start, it's just, it's, it's a whole lot of fun, really. It's, 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 but it's not rocket science. You just sit, it's a sit down job. I wouldn't do this on the lathe normally at home. I go to the kitchen table and have a cup of tea. If anyone's seen my kitchen table, and most of you have, you'll know bloody exactly what it looks like. It's full of projects and stuff, and that's where I sit and do my thinking and designing. I don't do it in the workshop. I design out of the workshop and then say, right, I'm gonna go in the workshop and make that. And it's so much quicker. That's where your best designs will come from. Come to your kitchen. Yep. And you've got to be relaxed and unpressured. 
And if you don't make it today, you'll make it tomorrow. You don't have to rush out into the, into the workshop and justify your time. You need to plan it first and then you'll make it in half the time and for a more successful result. So colour combinations are really quite nice with those braid colours that I showed you before. Braids. Um, and of course you can use copper wire or stainless wire or some leather or whatever, whatever spins your wheels. Leather and wood go really, really well together. If you were doing leather, would you again cut the leather at an angle and maybe put a bit of superglue? Yes, yes, there? just to give it a, a tighter entry because <laughs> I'm using a small drill bit hole. Yeah. A small drill bit so that I don't want a huge great hole there. I want the hole really nondescript really. I don't want that, you know, because it's just another space that you don't need. And then, and then you can... Um, stitch away like this and then you can hang tassels down the outside like I showed you before in some of those other sketches if you want and as you can see by that stitching if I pull that round a little bit there you can probably see where I'm going with that yeah is that okay so you get the idea you don't have to be too brilliant at it uh, it's uh, it's not it's not difficult at all and the various different colours and multi-plated braids and, and uh, you just do some searching and it's not expensive stuff and it's beautiful to uh, dress up the top of your pieces in a variety of host wood of course. If you get any joins or knots you can emphasise them by tying on these little tassels as I showed you in the pictures before. See that there if you come to a join just emphasize the join and then you can uh, hide that and of course through the hole but I'll just hang it there so you can see it look at that they're bright they're flashy it's a bit of bling you certainly don't obviously have to or even want to do it on every piece you make but it is something a little different and inexpensive to have a go at a little bit of patience on your setting out uh, on your tool sharpening even I'm just attempting to put two there because I can. I was just thinking that for a fisherman, you could, uh, or fisherwoman, you could do some lures. Yes. Just tassels, something. If different. you like. Make a nice turned upside down mat stand. <coughs> so, you know, the sky's the limit, and the more you play with it and the looser you sort of feel about it, the better you'll see the result. Um, and the braids and the things like little bits of power with holes in, uh, stuff that you can get from Ocean Shell which is sky's the limit you can get uh, anything to put on there um, if you're an engineer hang some nuts and bolts around the outside mm. just let your brain go loose about it and it, it will raise quite a bit of an attention Pe people will look at it and think gee that's that's kind of different and certainly it will be different so these small things here um, are toki made in cowrie with the, a bit of weaving and plaiting, I turn the toggles and they go into these little bags here and there's a little written description that goes into the bag. That can take, you know, your, your weaving and stitching to any level you like really. Uh, with this different shapes and designs, good finish on the timber and a little toggle slide on the end of here so you can adjust it to the neck. So you can use your smaller pieces of wood if you don't have a lot of wood, then think about your project <coughs> design. When we're talking about stitching and we're talking about dressing up a piece and drilling through the wall and, and this is where you can sort of take it to another level. Um, this piece is 550 high by 400 mils in diameter. It's a hollow, cowrie hollow form with a red beach neck, burr red beach neck with coca bowl around the rim. And I've gone for almost a, I suppose, an American Indian look or whatever you want to call it with a cross stitching of leather. I've used the, um, the wristlet braid colour underneath, hung the tassels down the side and I've turned, this is coconut palm down here, into triangular forms, turned them and through drilled them with a little bead in underneath and tassels down the sides. So um, uh, these sort of pieces uh, I did and counter drilled the leather because it's through the wall so I had to do all the stitching before I fixed this neck, neck on. The neck was off 
uh, and that is glued on with a rebate. So that allows me to turn through a 120 millimeter hole when I hollow it out, right? And then the neck is designed and put on afterwards. But that allows me to put my hand in so I can pull the stitching through because this goes right through and to get that box section of leather. You follow that? Yeah. So I can reach the inside. Um, and um, yeah, so I just wanted to show you even on a hollow form, it just creates a whole new dimension. Uh, with the use of that type of thing, that only took me about two hours to stitch. It looks like it's a lot longer, but it, it doesn't. This material here is already in braided form, the bright color underneath. The leather uh, is already a band, and it's just, uh, it's really not, not difficult at all. And hang them down, and it's, uh, it's uh, just a touch on what you can do with a hollow form. So this one here is a leather stitched edge. So this is a cowrie hollow form, uh, 400 in diameter by 150 deep. And it's a reverse curve, a reverse curve here. And then it's cross stitched at a different type of pattern thing on the lip edge. And it's very tactile because when you put your hand inside the form, you can feel the leather right on the edge and you just want to tuck around the corner and feel the stitch. So I've stitched it right around the entrance and it's a, just a ballooning sort of a shape, cowrie with a wax finish with the leather. So two natural products together, it sweeps around with a normal sort of a basin writing underneath. But leather and wood go together very well. Mm. Here's leather and wood again. This is a platter, uh, 550 in diameter by 70 high. Uh, it's a piece of cowrie from the Northland coast cross-stitched with black leather. A similar bead shape to the bead shape I've just shown you with a counter drill underneath here in the corner. So the leather is looped over the bead and tucked over and into the back and it's cross-stitched leather. The leather band is cheap enough. It's already about, it's about 3.5 wide to four wide. It handles very well. I cut a long edge on it and super glue it sort of stiff so I can stitch it through the hole uh, this one here, I had four times the diameter in linear length for the um, a leather to get me round the piece and you've still got some left to pull it up. And when I get, you can't see the join of where I finished off, there's no tassels hanging on this one because I put super glue on the last pull and underneath and pulled the super glue back into the hole and did a razor cut on the outside and cut the edge off. So you can't see where I finished. Yeah. So it's leather, the rolled bead edge with a cowrie with a wax finish. So the whole bowl is completely finished before I stitch it. And then it's a sit down at the kitchen table job and stitch it. Don't do it in the workshop with all the dust and try and side onto the lathe. Get out of your workshop more and you'll achieve better results. So this is another um, cowrie one. So this is uh, uh, 500 in diameter by 120 high. Uh, this went to the US. Uh, this is leather stitched here with a different configuration again. Uh, by having the whole series, the moment you change direction and pick up whatever hole is next to it, you change the pattern. Um, so this is more than 24 spacings. So then I've drilled an extra hole between. You follow that? Mm -hmm. To give the busier look. And the leather stitching once again on the edge. Now this is rolled right in underneath here, you see? Mm -hmm. It's a rolled edge. Uh, it's a big piece. It's uh, what we call young cowrie, so it's not the swamp cowrie brown. So it's a bit younger, uh, active grain, and uh, a fairly simple form. Uh, and there is a little V-cut line here that, that uh, locates and where the holes are, and the leather is tight through the hole. Uh, and the leather, it just get that hole size right and drill it clean, and the leather is unmarked by the time you get right round it. And pull it tight, it'll take you pulling it tight and it stays there forever. And then pull the last cut up on super glue and cut off with a razor knife. Uh, this is another one uh, that I did. This is Blackwood, New Zealand Blackwood. Uh, this is uh, 300 in diameter by 150 high, uh, hollow, completely hollow form. And I thought to myself, well, I'm going <coughs> to go something a little bit more radical in the way it's. Uh, handled down so 
I drilled four holes at random positions. I just basically had it like that in my mount, and I just drilled four holes, and then I went over to the bandsaw, and I cut four pegs, just a wedge-shaped four pegs, and I pulled the leather around, around the peg and put the peg on top of the hole and just drove it in with a hammer. You can see the pegs are still oh, sticking yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. And then I looped it around to pull the lid down. The lid is not glued. <coughs> so it's the peg holds it there and this goes around here and pulls it down in the peg and I just slammed it in with a bit of glue. So I got the leather between my hands and I just rolled it like that mm. and then slammed the peg in. It was one of those senior moments, you know. <laughs> and, and, then, and then I got that the leather here with a peg, slammed it in a bit of glue, went round there and slammed it into there. Um, and then this is hewn pine from Australia, uh, and this is New Zealand blackwood. Uh, and I gave the piece a title. I called it Trapped, and I doubled the price. It sold in three days. So, and the blackwood and the hewn pine just combined very, very nicely. So it was just one of those odd things that if you grab the idea and do it, uh, you need to see the result and someone else needs to see the result when you finished it for you to assess for yourself, did it work or did it not? So those sort of pieces never let a chance go by. It's quite different from some of the other pieces that I was working on leather and stitching at the time. And, and what I've really shown you tonight is only just a look, I could be here for a week. Leather is a wonderful material and you can get it in greys, whites, you can put yellow leather, you can buy yellow leather strip on black puri and it looks absolutely dynamite. You know, yellow and black just go together so beautifully, you can utilise the colour, the texture, the smell and everything, so that dark puri and you strap it with yellow leather, it's readily available. And the yellow is like as yellow as this, it's bright and you, you know, you can really get some good combinations of colour. Um, the, the more you, you play around with different materials in colour and texture and width and price, the better you'll like it. It's not detracting away from the wood because it's only a small enhancement, isn't it? You can still see the timber top and bottom. Yeah. You know, you're not really trying to take it away. You're not painting it. You're not covering it over. You're just enhancing it in a subtle way. This is the way I draw my projects and, and sit down at the kitchen table, don't do it in the workshop because you'll be feel stressed want to start the thing already. Just set it up and draw a project. There's one still with a faceplate on the top. You get a chance to keep the drawing. This is a binding going around differently all together with a couple of tassels. <laughs> if you look closely, you see there's the start position up there and there's the finish position. And, and then you bind it and then, and then emphasise where you start and when you finish and put a tassel on it. That's green braid. So would, would you super glue the whole thing and just edge um, it? No, th with that one I would use the tight bond. tight bond glue. Yeah. I'd use tight bond glue uh, and just and pull it down on that and it stays there. Mm -hmm. And, and it goes yeah. like clear when you're finished, you yes. know. This is the aliphatic type of a glue. Mm -hmm. But by drawing some various different pieces, um, basically first when you start, um, it, it makes such a difference. And, and therefore, write some notes down. I love to draw and plan. I plan every piece I make. Get yourself a good piece of wood. Don't don't try and work on a piece of firewood. And and you know a good piece of wood won't let you down. Your tool might work, you might have to work on a little bit more or, or, or something you're sharpening or seek some help, someone will help you. But if you want to make something you've got a picture out of a book and you come and see me, I'll, make you, I'll help you make exactly that. We won't change our mind. And when I make that piece that I just showed you there, or those three pieces under my writings there, then that's what it'll look like. And, um, you know, unless you have a little fault in the wood that you might have to, a little design change slightly, but generally not. These, these pieces of wood are pretty faultless, so I don't really need to change my mind. So thank you for uh, your patience. Um, I would have liked to have covered probably a lot more, but if you're stuck for any other ideas, give me a call, and then I'll help you. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.